Hey guys, what's up? It's Audrey, and welcome to the second part of this three-part series partnering with Rive. So TLDR, Rive is essentially a new motion design tool that can take your designs and your motion designs to a whole other level, not just giving your designs motion and life, but giving it interactivity and life in a whole other dimension. It empowers designers to build interactive graphics using familiar design and animation tools, as well as their groundbreaking state machine. This end-to-end -end pipeline guarantees that what you build in Rive looks and behaves exactly the same in your websites, products, apps, and games. In the last episode, uh, we covered a lot <laughs> in terms of uh, kind of setting up my design file, just the overall organization of everything, and kind of starting to think about how to best format this project uh, for the all of the options and just uh, the variety that this um, project has. So in this video, uh, we're going to finally get into the animation tab. The first video is more heavily based in the design tab and just organizing everything, and now we're going to get into the animation side of things um, and creating timelines for each of our different states, trying to kind of figure out uh, what making an idle animation might be like, trying to set this thing up for success uh, for when we start actually assigning it actions and everything within the state machine, and that's part three. So yeah, let's just get into it and see where we land. So real quick before we get into the bone stuff, wanted to kind of share this other uh, Rive file that I think is super helpful for what I'm kind of going for here and understanding just when it comes to the different outfits that impacting the like idle repeating loop, the walk cycle. Again, looking at the left here with these different um, skins, um, we're gonna kind of take note of that and apply that with our own. Um, so they have like a skin zero for when there's nothing, um, but we probably won't do that because I don't want them to be naked <laughs> necessarily. I think down here below, we're gonna make our own like idle stance. Um, so that'll kind of be like our base rig there, but that's just part of the timeline. But if we go to just the design side of things here, so we've got our root group, we've got the character, got the skins here, and then we have these like control uh, layers here. When I'm looking at files like this, I'm really clicking on literally everything and then trying to look on this like right side here to see what settings are changing and what is connected to what. So we can see with this body rig here and how it's like kind of the parent group of everything and then as it gets deeper and deeper, it starts to get more specific. And under a lot of these uh, bones or joints, you can also add in your artwork. So the head here, this is just like a path, because um, again, in Rive, you can literally design from the ground up within Rive. Um, you can also copy and paste things from Figma or Illustrator if you want to go more vector-based, but um, Rive is more um, vector-based as well, so you could literally design this in Rive if you wanted to. Taking note of like, there's a bone group here and I can put my artwork under that, so it essentially parents it to that bone here or the joint. So again, just taking note of that we're going to make uh, a rig. <laughs> we're gonna make a, a nice little bone system here. So I've got my <laughs> got my notes here. We're just gonna we're just gonna go for it. And we're just gonna go with this singer singer's pose here. It's very neutral. It's probably the most neutral one here. Um, all right, so I've got my bone tool here, clicking B. Um, and I guess I will start from like, the base of the neck here. And I'll go down to like the hips, do a little bit of hip action there. I don't know how specific to get <laughs> with this, honestly, but I'm just gonna kind of go with my gut here. Um, so yeah, going down to the knees and then clicking V to get out of that. And so I've got one root bone, <laughs> one root bone here. And so kind of just looking at this and seeing how the hierarchy goes from here and where this starts. Um, so I might just try to name these just to kind of keep track. And then from here, we can kind of start wherever we want from here. So if I want to do the right side of this with the right leg, I can start from the hip here, I think. Click from that hip there and do the same thing. And then from there, you can adjust the joints as well if you need. Okay, so that's like perfectly lined up, which is nice. I'm just, <laughs> I'm, I'm trying. I'm, I'm really just uh, overthinking this probably. But again, just doing what I think makes sense. Okay, so from here, I'm going to do the torso. Oh, whoops. Okay. 
I see. So this is the other hip that I'm going to put under the waist so that they're kind of equal there and attached to the waist. Yeah, that makes sense. Okay. From the neck, hit B again, and I'll start to the shoulder, to elbow, to wrist. All that left arm. And then yet again, the right side. Well, that looks like a skeleton to me, which is good. <laughs> and then we'll probably want to do one more for the like neck and like head joints there. So this is our our skeleton. Um, let's call this base skeleton, I guess. And again, I'm not sure if I should like put this in the root group or not. It doesn't really seem like it matters. I think again, it's more acting as a reference than anything. And with all of these different kind of settings that you can have here, um, it's, it, it's all acting as like a reference point. So I'll just leave that there at the very bottom for now. And now we're gonna do some inverse kinematics or an IK constraint. Um, so this is going to allow us to, in the most simplest way, um, create just a few controls so that we can have like whatever kind of animations we want with the characters um, with as little keyframes as possible, which we want, obviously. Um, so I'm pretty sure if we go and open up kind of our base skeleton here, I'm gonna go to design mode for this. So ideally we wanna do an IK constraint at the ends of like limbs and stuff. So like the wrists and the feet really. Um, and then maybe the head if we want to, you know, give them some of that. And then the hips, um, cause that is kind of like the central moving point for the body. Um, so to do that, um, we're going to make a group and make that a target. So I hit G here, we could go up here, hit group, and then I'm going to just click anywhere. And then over here, like I mentioned before, style, change that from group to a target. And then we can move this group, um, we'll just do this wrist right here for now. So it's nice that you can get that snapping there and a you know, they have settings for everything. If you wanted to take that off, uh, you can go up here um, and you can turn snapping off and all this stuff. If you wanted to turn off your skeleton, I can do that as well up there. Um, so I have my, my group target here. Um, and then we're actually going to click on this arm here. So if I go to the left arm, bone three, and then we're going to add a constraint over here on the right side. And then they have IK very conveniently placed for us as <laughs> we're going to hit IK for inverse kinematics. Um, and then it's going to ask you for a target. And so when you click on target, it shows that live panel of like, all right, what target do you want? Uh, we're going to click that group up here. I'm going to rename that um, left wrist target. And so you'll notice too that this one bone here is yellow, um, which means that this is under the influence of that target there. So if I move this wrist target around, it's following that really nicely, um, but it's not affecting anything else um, because that target is just affecting that bone. And so I believe uh, in order to make the other, this other part of the arm under the influence as well with that, with that constraint, we'll go to the constraint tab over there um, and under bone count here we'll change that from one which is just accounting for that forearm to two and now that that's accounting for that one that's good <laughs> and so now when we move the target around we have a nice bendy arm which is awesome and it doesn't like stretch or um, do anything super funky. We've got that flexibility there. Um, so I'm just going to apply the same technique to the other stuff, uh, the other bones that we have here. So I'll do that again. I'll do that with this right arm here. So we've got a left wrist target and then we'll make another group uh, slash target and call that right wrist. So we've got that um, almost placed where we want. Um, gonna make that a target and then we're gonna go to the bone that we need to um, apply a constraint to. So we've got that here. Add a IK constraint and then we're just gonna automatically change this to two because we know we need two. Um, and so we're gonna click target and we're gonna click the right wrist target. And so now we have our other, our other constraint. Um, and you'll notice too that it's inverted, which 
very conveniently under that bone with the constraint, uh, we can invert that direction. So now when we move, move it around, um, it'll move properly. We got a skeleton with the rig, guys. Very sassy. I like this. Womp, 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 womp. All right, cool. So real quick, um, before we start kind of doing this to our own project, I wanted to show another uh, community project that I thought was super helpful specifically for the kind of thing that I'm trying to do. So what we're going to start doing is in the animation tab over here, um, we're going to start adding in a bunch of different timelines. So what I mean by that is essentially like going in and essentially kind of toggling each different variation of essentially our character and like the background and stuff like that. Everything that has an option to be changed, uh, we're going to make a separate timeline for that. So all of these skin tones here are different timelines. Um, each of the clothing options are different timelines. And notice how like they're not combined with anything else because essentially that will be combined within the state machine, if that makes sense, if I'm gathering that right. <laughs> so there's gonna be a lot of options here. There's gonna be a lot of timelines um, um, but uh, when we finally get into the state machine, um, we're going to start just adding in all of these other inputs and listeners and all that stuff. But this is for um, video three, but just kind of a sneak peek of like where we're heading and why we want to set up this the way that we want to set it up. And then there's also an idle animation as well where she's... Uh, just blinking um, and I'm probably going to do more idle animation with like the body movement and just kind of like a, a standing kind of pose. But yeah, I just wanted to show this as an example of kind of where we're starting this video off. If you like this video so far, feel free to give a like, subscribe, all the youtube -y things, um, and please stay tuned for the next episode, uh, part three out of three of this Rive series. Um, and if you haven't watched uh, the episode before, watch part one. Um, and be sure to check out Rive's channel um, to look at all the foundational 101 course kind of stuff for Rive um, if you want to make your own projects. And especially if you're looking to give your work uh, another level of dimension and life, uh, definitely uh, check out Rive to see what you can do with your own work. Yeah, that's all I got. <laughs> Back to the video. We're going to finally graduate from design and move into animate mode. Um, I did that by switching um, the tab over here and I'm pretty sure if you hit tab um, it actually toggles in between those. So I actually uh, just to kind of start this off I actually made a couple timelines here. Don't really have anything in like the instrument timelines yet uh, but just to kind of set them up. Um, so starting with uh, one of the timelines uh, specifically for the skin tone. Um, so I think what I did here was essentially make a new timeline and then I was able to toggle like literally just clicking this toggle button here and then that toggled the the blue leg and it's something really cool that I've discovered about uh, solo groups is that if I were to like duplicate this timeline and it had all the legs the arms neck head anywhere where there was skin tone here uh, because they're in a solo group you can literally go to this like drop down menu here where there's a keyframe where it says active and you can just select you can just select from there rather than having to go through your layers and everything so I thought that was a really cool little hack um, so we're going to kind of explore what that looks like a little deeper here. So just a reminder, so this being a, a skin tone timeline, uh, we're just going to be looking through the layers for um, solo groups that literally just have the skin tone. So we don't have to worry about outfits or anything like that right here. Um, so I've got the left leg. Now I'm going to look for the right leg. And so you can see here if I if I just hit the, uh, the toggle where it wasn't selected before, I can go in and make sure that that's all blue. Whenever I want to duplicate this, I can just change the um, the drop down here. So I got the left leg, the right leg, Now I'm going to do the arms. And something that's really nice about um, doing this in general is that when you hover over any of your toggled layers um, that you've added a keyframe to, it will highlight in your layers panel where that is in case you need to edit anything or, or change something up. Um, so it's super nice uh, to be able to look through and just make sure, um, especially with as complex of a project as this one is, everything that you need to be toggled on is there. And I'm not gonna lie, I forgot how <laughs> many layers I have. Oh my god, so many layers. So we've got like a six armed um, rock star here, <laughs> super fun. But I think 
to be more safe than sorry, um, making sure that, again, all of the skin tone pieces that need to be shown for a specific skin tone is part of this timeline. Um, and then I'm just going to duplicate that and then just change all of the colors so I don't have to keep going into my layers here to make sure I have everything. Sweet, so now we have all of our skin tones. So when I click on each timeline, uh, it sifts through each one. So first success so far. <laughs> so we've got most of our timelines here. Um, not as many as I thought, but knock on wood, who's to say that <laughs> we won't have to add more later. But um, so we've got our skin tones, the four different instruments, um, the different outfits, hair. Um, you can kind of see here, it kind of toggles through each. So that's that's kind of the intention, hopefully, with like the actual interactivity. It, it looks kind of jank right now, and who's to say what this is supposed to actually look like? But so yeah, we've got all the makeup, uh, jewelry. Something I wanted to do really quick was to create an idol animation, um, just to kind of have our character move a little bit and no matter what settings um, and like features the the person or the users actually like flipping through no matter what they choose they are continuously doing this just kind of like a swaying kind of chill um, kind of idle stance and all of the options and like outfits and everything should be attached to that we're going to go down here and add a new timeline and I'm going to call this idle we will go to our targets because that's where we actually do the animation um, of the person since we set up that rig, not the skeleton itself. I'm going to set this timeline to a loop so that it'll continuously loop. You can do that down here. And I'm going to start with the head up here and just kind of maybe like having them like bob their head a little bit as if there's like music playing in the background and like backstage or something. I mean, they're musicians, so they kind of they kind of need to. <laughs> I'm just going to start moving uh, some of these cursors that are um, centered around that target. And that will create, just by moving that alone, um, similar to After Effects, that'll create a keyframe here. I'm pretty sure that'll be, yeah, that's a position keyframe. And so obviously, if you move this wheel, it adds a rotation keyframe. So similar to After Effects, where like you don't need to start off by adding a keyframe, you could just start kind of manipulating the assets and it'll add that for you. Actually going to add a keyframe at the one second mark and make this a ping pong animation so that we'll have a little more time for them to kind of like bob their head a little bit and it won't be as fast. Just realizing my face is covering up a very important part of the animation process with uh, the interpolation settings down here. Um, so similar to After Effects where you have, you know, your hold keyframes linear, um, and cubic um, for easing and everything. Um, you have different options down here to do that. Um, and so for this, I definitely want to use cubic um, and to give it some easing um, so it doesn't feel so, you know, robotic. So we've got the head um, animated a little bit. Maybe we do add the right wrist position here um, so that whatever arm, I guess, it affects, we can just... We can just add a little, just add a little movement. If I'm thinking of this right, the right wrist will affect all of the right wrists, not just this drummer one. So, and I don't think we'll be able to see that really until we get into the state machine because they're all separated. So I think until we get to the state machine is where we're going to actually see if that kind of if that theory kind of works and then here's the final uh idle animation that i kind of have going on again it's super simple um but just wanted to be able to have something that could work across all poses so again i hope this was helpful along with the other videos in this series um, and especially for those wanting to learn rive um, and just learning how to kind of take your work to the next level again be sure to check out rive's website uh, check out the community projects uh, kind of just dig around in there and just see what other people have done uh, with the tool and with their own artwork and if you're interested in learning about rive and how to use it definitely look at their youtube channel i watched the entire playlist of the rive 101 series which is how i got here and doing what I'm doing now. So I think combining those things, um, the Rive 101 and the community tab will help you get to where you need to be to at least start. And be sure to keep an eye out for the third and final part of this series where we get into the state machine and starting to kind of bring home all of the, all of the prep work and all of the foundational stuff that we've done for this project and bring it home. Thanks again for watching and I will see you in the next and final video.